Well, NASA made history again yesterday, landing the InSight spacecraft on Mars. It really is a remarkable achievement, traveling millions of miles and using Mars atmosphere, a high-speed parachute, and rockets to stick the landing. And joining us tonight to discuss this remarkable moment is MIT scientist Jennifer Birch. She's been on before. Mm -hmm. Always nice to see you. Friend yeah. of the program. <laughs> <laughs> Friend of the program, indeed. The first question I have, it's so easy for us to lose perspective when we've seen uh, spacecraft land on Mars before. We've had the rover on there before. It's driven around. We've collected samples. Mm -hmm. What makes this so difficult? Why is it so remarkable to land something on Mars like we've just done again? One of the main challenges is that Mars is just so far away that we don't actually have instantaneous communication. So I don't know if you caught the video of the people in the control room at NASA having these very tense expressions on their faces <laughs> yeah. as the rover landed. That data, as we started to get it in, that it had been successful, had been traveling for eight minutes. Mm -hmm. And so there was this eight-minute delay where the rover had to do everything on its own, make decisions, land itself, and then tell us it had succeeded, and we just didn't actually know if that had happened. And there's all that risk that as it's entering the atmosphere, it burns up or it crashes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All kinds of variables involved with trying to get the it to do that. The speed change is crazy. So so InSight hit the atmosphere doing something like 10,000 miles an hour wow. and then managed to slow itself to about 5 miles an hour before wow. it touched down. And just that change is a huge undertaking. Amazing. And we're already seeing some stunning images today yeah. uh, from the initial first day there on Mars. But that's actually not the mission of InSight. What is going to be the mission for it moving forward? Sure, yeah. So the images were kind of its first uh, hello, I made it sign, which is always <laughs> a welcome thing to receive. Yeah. InSight is actually focused on kind of taking the vital signs of Mars. So where a lot of missions over the past few decades have focused on the surface of Mars and the canyons and rivers and dunes that we can see, InSight mm -hmm. is actually going to look below the surface. It's going to do things like monitor seismic waves, uh, take the temperature of Mars, looking for a heat flow, and monitor very precise changes in the planet's position, all of which will help us understand what's going on beneath the surface. So why do we care about the seismic activity on Mars? So the big thing is that by looking inside the planet, it's going to help us understand the formation and the evolution of the planet. So instead of getting a sense of what's happened over the past few thousand years, which we get from looking at the surface, we'll be able to get a better idea of what happened four and a half billion years ago mm. when Mars was first formed. Wow. And that's a hard thing to do. Wow. And speaking of hard things to do, <laughs> how is InSight getting the information back to us here on Earth? Sure. So because it's a lander, InSight will stay on the surface of Mars. Its mission should last for about two years. It relies on other spacecraft orbiting Mars. So InSight sends them information information mm -hmm. and then they ping it to Earth and sync wow. it off of the deep space network. So we send spacecraft up years and years ago. It's now being used to relay information yeah. to mm -hmm. us from the ground on Mars. Unbelievable. Incredible. How does it have power on Mars. It has to deploy these instruments that you say will measure some seismic activity, yep. that sort of thing. How does it How does it generate power while it's sitting there on Mars? And so the second kind of big uh, teeth-biting or nail-biting moment mm -hmm. was InSight unfolding its solar panels, which happened last night. And so there are these big solar panels uh, that unfold. They will collect light from the sun. And hopefully, even when there are dust storms on Mars, they'll still be big enough. They can pull in enough photons, enough mm -hmm. energy to run all mm -hmm. three of those instruments. And you, I would imagine that would really help in our solar panel technology technology, right? Yeah. What we can learn sure. from the kind of it's, power. Yeah, one of the many ways where, wow. you know, the science we develop looking outwards to space can actually benefit us back here yeah. on Earth as well. And, you know, we've joked for decades about little green men, uh, but <laughs> what's the fascination with Mars? Why not, as Liam brought up, why not go to Mercury or Venus? Why do we always seem to focus on Mars in this era? Sure. So the big thing with Venus is that its atmosphere is very different from Earth. It's very corrosive. It's not a very friendly or hospitable place. Mars doesn't have much of an atmosphere, but it is more similar, more hospitable to us than Venus is. And so it's huh. close enough that we can get to it, and it's similar enough to mm. Earth that it'll help us to better understand how small planets, small rocky planets really come into existence. And of course, a rocky planet like ours, why not Mercury. I know that that's not all that far away. It's not that much farther than Mars, right? Why not Mercury? It, it's a fair distance away. I think the main concern uh, is just that it's so hot, it's so mm. close to the sun that the surface can be really, really toasty. Yeah. Wow. Well, hopefully, Inside is going to have a great time up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than Matt Damon. <laughs> On Mars. Then the people come next. <laughs> we'll send them up there eventually. It's, it's coming. True. Would you go? Oh, I don't know. If it was a return trip, then yes. <laughs> That's great. Round trip ticket. Jennifer Bird from MIT, thank you so much. Always yeah, good to thanks. see you. Thank you so much. Let's talk to our scientist, Eric Fisher.